Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mildra, and I am your Gaming Monk for the evening. This is day 26 of the RPG A Day 2019 challenge. Today's word is idea. There's a fair amount of freedom in what you can do when it comes to role-playing games. But for whatever reason, this is, and this is something that's annoyed me for the longest time, there seems to be this notion that there are certain ideas that you're not supposed to go into, or certain styles of play that you're not supposed to do. I think I first saw this mindset right around the time I discovered the Tome of Battle expansion for um, D&D 3rd Edition, which was derisively known as Weeaboo Fight and Magic, and that's where I started, that's where I started seeing this attitude, because this was right around the time when there was that boom period with with anime in the er, in the early to mid 2000s. And within this period, there was this notion of of purism from some anime fans where quote unquote American manga or American anime was derided as not be, as not counting because it wasn't made in Japan. So you get something like, say, Avatar, which would end up sparking debates constantly about whether or not it qualified as an anime. Now, personally, because I view at because I view anime as a style and I view animation as a as a medium, not a genre, I always saw the argument as pedantic at worst and seeing forest for the trees at my most charitable. And it's the same, and consequently. You had this sort of notion from a lot of traditional D and D um, players that you're somehow not allowed to take inspiration from video games or for, or from anime. This was when I started coming up with the term the Tolkien melting pot, which was my nickname for the for this combination of three different authors' work that kind of found, forms the foundation of a lot of D&D's ideas. You know, your Moorcock, your Howard, and your Vance. As, and, of course, and, of course, you know, J.R.R. Tolkien himself. But the point, the point that I want to bring at is you, have a, you now have, and you had at that point, a generation of people who got their start into role-playing games through video games. And that is going to be a chief point of inspiration for them. I've never understood this notion of why, you, why they can't design ideas that reflect that. Like, it's pretty well known that I'm a big fan of Anima, the Spanish RPG that took me about two years worth of waiting in order to get... They outright admitted that there were several console-style RPGs that were their inspiration, as well as various anime. And some of them they outright name in several of the expansions, especially in Dominus Extent. I believe they call out Devil May Cry and Bayonetta, Bayonetta by name. Um, the Book of Nine Swords, if I recall correctly, mentioned Final Fantasy and Soul Calibur. Now look. If somebody doesn't quite understand this this new medium that is not that is not into their tradition, I can understand that to an extent. But to say that trying to take inspiration from that is somehow blasphemous is elitist. To put it another way, anyone deriding a RPG an RPG because they're because it's turning into a video game can frankly go piss up a rope. I hated this idea in the early 2000s when I saw, when I saw people comparing D&D 3rd edition to Diablo. I hated this idea in the late 2000s when people were comparing D&D 4th edition to WoW. And now I still hate that idea when I'm starting to see people comparing Shadowrun 6th edition to a video game. Because it is an argument based solely on an emotional response not on logic. And more importantly, it's not based on any proper game design, but rather someone's romanticized idea of it. A.K.A. a lot of pretty little words that do absolutely shit for me 